lost touch with my soul. I had nowhere to turn, I had nowhere to go. Lost sight of my dream, thought it would be the end of me. I thought I'd never make it through. Hi, thanks so much for tuning in. Isn't it great to see a new year? This year more than ever, we don't take that for granted. Right off, I'm gonna share with you some intimate excerpts from a letter I transcribed. I ran across it recently, tucked away in a book, and it gripped my heart just like it did the first time I read it. It says, Here's what the problem is. You are not giving everything your best. You somehow think that your less than is acceptable and it isn't. You have within you so much more. Yes, I will do the exceeding abundantly, but I need you to do. Do your part and do it well. 
you don't have any time to waste. Tomorrow is not promised. You are not getting younger. What are you waiting on? If Satan can't get you to sin, he will get you to delay and delay and delay. Get momentum. Light the fire under yourself. Encourage yourself. Stop procrastinating. Motivate yourself to be all God called you to be and to do. Refuse to rest on knowledge or past laurels or smarts. Get some grit, determination. You have only one race to run and to win, and it's yours. Let other people's races inspire you, but don't focus on them. You can't win looking behind and to the left and to the right. Keep your eyes on me and where and how I'm telling you to run. I'm your coach. Also, everything you do must flow out of love, your love for me. People know when you do something out of love and a sincere desire to encourage. Always make sure your motives are pure in everything you do. Genuinely love and I will help you. Let everything you do be stamped with love and that will make me smile. I don't believe that letter was just for me. It was about me, but it was also about you because we're all on the same journey, flawed and facing the same challenges, the same roadblocks. So my purpose today is to encourage you to join me in focusing, to focus on what really matters like never before in 2021 by taking these six action steps. And the first one is, give God your very best. Notice I said your very best because your best and my best are totally different. We all have a distinct call on our life. We all have different strengths and abilities, talents and limitations that were given to us by God. And he wants us to maximize what he's given us. Remember the story of the first two brothers, Cain and Abel? Well, Abel was a shepherd and Cain was a farmer. And so when it was time for them to bring their offerings to the Lord, Abel gave him the best portions of his flock. Cain presented some of his crops, but they were not his best, but his second best. So God accepted Abel's gift, but not Cain's. Cain got very angry. And so God said to him in Genesis 4, 6 through 7, why are you so angry, Cain? The Lord asked him, why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. What was the right thing for Cain to do? to give God his best. God didn't reject his gift because Cain was not a shepherd. He rejected it because he gave God less than his best. What has God called you to do? To be a wife, a mother, a single in this season? a manager, a business owner, a career professional, a frontline employee, whatever it is, give him your very best. Why? Because you are serving Christ. Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember 
that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. Give God your best. But in order to do what you can do and to do it well, you must master your impulses. That's what God told Cain. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out because sin is crouching at your door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. Genesis 4, 7. It's our responsibility to subdue whatever is preventing us from being our best. Is it pornography? Is it procrastination? Is it sex outside of marriage? Is it sloth? Is it bitterness? Berating others? Hebrews 12.1 says, let us strip off every weight and every sin, whatever is slowing us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. All of us have something in our lives that is preventing us from doing our very best. It may not be a sin, but it's a weight. It's holding us back. This is when we need to be honest with ourselves, do an examination and call it out. Admit the problem and then cry out to God and ask him to make you victorious. It may not happen overnight, but we need to be vigilant to root it out because we will be fighting this flesh until we die. I've discovered that my biggest battle every day is Cheryl. It's not other people, but it's what's going on inside of me. Our mandate is to master those impulses. We don't want to end up like Cain. He refused to do so. He refused to master his anger and jealousy, and he murdered his own brother. So we decide to give God our very best. We master those impulses and then we prize our time. The clock is ticking. Tick tock. Tick tock. And it never goes backwards. It only goes forward and all of us are getting older. We don't know which day will be our last. Many of us were shocked and saddened last year when we saw loved ones, young and old, depart quickly and unexpectedly. We don't have any time to waste this year. Light a fire under yourself and say, it is time to be about my father's business. That's at the top of my to-do list. Moses said in Psalm 90, 12, Lord, teach us to number our days, to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. Life is short and full of distractions every single day. I believe distractions are from the devil. Most of the time, they aren't sin. They aren't bad, but they derail us from our purpose. And they keep us from pursuing God's best. So let's ask these questions. Is this worth my time? Scouring the internet for hours, watching TV for hours, 
chatting on the phone about nothing that's meaningful. Seize the time. It's time for us to prize our time. Number four, focus firmly on Christ. He was the one who called us to run this race, and the only way we can win it is to keep our eyes on our coach, Jesus Christ himself, to keep our eyes fixed on him. Going back to Hebrews 12, verse 2, the author says, the way we run our race with endurance, the race God has set before us is by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. What are you looking at? Who are you looking at? Are you getting your cues about what you should focus on, on the culture? Always wrong. Or Christ? Jesus gave Peter a succinct command in John chapter 21. He said, Peter, you follow me. You see, Peter was asking about John's fate. What's going to happen to him? You know the disciple Jesus loved? And Jesus said to him very sternly, Peter, what I'm doing in John's life is not your business. You, Peter, follow me. And that's what he's saying to us today. You follow me. We can get off track focusing on how others are running their race. Some have dropped out. They got derailed by a besetting sin. Some are running faster than we are. Some have allowed the cares of the world to choke out Christ, to choke out their devotion to Christ. Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3, he used to be impressed with his pedigree. He thought it mattered, his intelligence, his ethnicity, his accomplishments. But now he considered all those things a loss for the supreme privilege. Nothing else mattered but knowing Christ, our Lord. Paul said he discarded and considered everything else garbage compared to knowing Christ. What did he want more than anything Paul said it was to know Christ and to experience his mighty power. Are you longing for that today? Do you long to know that supernatural power that only Christ and the Holy Spirit can give? That power to set people free? That power to heal from diseases? that power to make us new? Are you crying out for that more than anything? I am to see God do mighty things in this generation like he did in the book of Acts. We have to long for it. We have to want that more than anything to see God at work. The power is still the same. The word of God is still the same. He is just as powerful as he was when he spoke the world into existence. He says, if you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with all of my, your heart, what are you seeking today? More money, more esteem, more Facebook followers, more Instagram followers. 
the God of the universe is waiting for us to seek him, to want him more than anything. He's a jealous God. He has made it very clear what he requires of a disciple. All or nothing, you must love me with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind and all of your strength. And that means all. He will not give his place to anyone else. He wants an exclusive relationship where we are about the business every day we wake up in the morning checking in with him to find out father what is it you're asking me to do that's how jesus operated every day and he was equal with god he was seeking his father early in the morning saying father what would you have me to do jesus says i don't do anything unless my father tells me to do it focus Jesus was singularly focused to do the will of his father and that's what I'm challenging you to set this year in order to say I will be singularly focused firmly on Christ not the coronavirus, we can't control that. Not politics, that's not our business. What is our business is to do the work of our Father. That's what God is longing for, to want Him more than anything else. It begins with totally committing your life to Christ. Have you done that yet? I'm not talking about being churched. I'm not talking about knowing about God. I'm talking about, have you given him 100% of your life? Today is the best day it is no better day than to do that in Hebrews. It says twice today when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart today. When you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. I implore you to say yes to Jesus today. I still remember that Tuesday night as a child when someone explained to me the plan of salvation that all I had to do was to invite Jesus Christ into my heart and he would come in. He would forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness and I gladly said yes. And when I invited Jesus Christ in my heart, I knew that he had come in and he has been with me ever since through every struggle, through every valley, through every disappointment, through every rejection. When I have walked through every door in my career, I sensed his presence with me. I have absolutely no regrets that I made that decision. There is nothing in this world that compares to knowing Christ. Maybe you're haunted by your past sins and failures. You have addictions that you want to break free from. 
you haven't been able to do so. You make three steps forward and two steps back because you need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Jesus Christ came to set us free from every sin. That's why he left heaven to die on the cross, to set us free, to break the chains of every sin that has us bound. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord. If you have fallen, get back up and get in the race. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He forgets our sins and put them in the sea of forgetfulness. If he has forgotten them, why don't you do the same thing today? A heavenly prize awaits you if you persevere. That's why when we firmly focus on Christ, we have to forget the past. That's what Apostle Paul said. You know what? It's not how you start. It's how you end. The football game is not won in the first quarter. It's not based on that score. It's based on the score in the last quarter, the last few seconds of the race. No one is perfect. No one has made an A-plus in every area. Even the great apostle Paul admitted he didn't have it all together. He had not arrived. But he was pressing on to possess the perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed him. How was he going to do this? By focusing on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. He was determined to press, to reach the end of the race. It's too soon to quit. A heavenly prize awaits you. You know what? I'm amazed at world-class athletes who are so focused and what they put their bodies through. The level of discipline, persistence, and focus. You know what? It's all for glory here and commendation that will not last past this life. But you know what I've learned from them? We are to be just as disciplined, just as persistent, just as focused to win our races for a crown that will not perish, that's waiting for us in heaven where we will live eternally. Let's not be distracted. This is what matters. So we focus on forgetting the past. We give God our best. We master our impulses. We prize our time. We focus firmly on Christ. We forget the past. And number six, finally, we overflow with authentic love. Love should be our distinguishing mark as Christ followers. Jesus said in John 13, 34 through 35, I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world 
that you are my disciples. How has he loved us? Sacrificially, unconditionally, without respect of person. God loves everybody. He values everybody. We all have direct access to a relationship with Almighty God through His Son, Jesus Christ. It is available to any and every person who desires it. Question for you. What if the culture could point to the church, the body of Christ, and say, wow, They've got this love thing down pat. Look at how they love each other. When I look at the church, there is no racism, no classism. Oh, how they care for each other. When someone's in need, they take care of it. When someone is promoted, they all rejoice. When one hurts, they step in, they assist. It doesn't matter. In the church, a person's color, their station in life, their educational level, all that matters is that they are in the family of God. What if the culture said, wow, when it took a peek at what goes on in your specific body of Christ? What if they said they have to be children of God because we have never seen anything like this outside of the church? Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 11, let love be your highest goal. 1 Corinthians 16, 14, do everything with love. His prayer for believers in Philippians 1, 9, I pray that your love will overflow more and more, not your cash, not your home, that your love will overflow more and more. Let's pray that this year that our love would overflow. We can never love too much. John wrote in 1 John 3, 18, dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. As my mother loves to say, talk is cheap. John goes on to say, our actions will show that we belong to the truth so we will be confident when we stand before God. If someone says, I love God but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. That's what it says in the book. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. This year, let's focus on overflowing with authentic love. Based on God's word, when we focus on these six action items, God will empower us to do them because Philippians 1, 6 says, I love this, he who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 2, 3 says, for God is working in you the will, the want to, and the power to do what pleases him. 
God is working in us the will to do, and he gives us the power to do what pleases him. So that means we are all without excuse. Aren't you glad that God is committed to us succeeding and winning our respective races? He will equip and strengthen us. Along your journey this year, in focusing on those six action steps, Excellent Living has created a resource, a PDF, to help you do this. It's our joy to offer it to you, and all you have to do is send us an email at info at excellentliving.org. That's info at excellentliving.org and put in the subject, focus. And we will get it to you. Excellent Living's mission, we are committed to encouraging you to do all of life God's way. Your relationships, your finances, your parenting, your dating God's way because it is the best way. We have resources. We have a weekly radio broadcast. You can listen to it when you visit our website, excellentliving.org. And if you choose to sign up, if you're not on our email list, if you sign up, you will learn about our seminars, events, our online studies. You will also learn about the Good News Anchor video encouragement episodes. All you have to do is email, put in your email on our website. It is my greatest honor to share timeless truths with you. Remember, we're on this journey together. We can all be winners, and I want all of us to win our respective races. We're not competing with each other. We are complementing. We all have a race to win. The goal? To hear our master coach say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Great job. I'd leave you with this from Hebrews 13. Now may the God of peace, the great shepherd, equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Thanks for the pleasure of your time, and I hope you have a great year of focus. <laughs>